All right, in this video, I will sh show you how to prove this limits question, which is limit x is closer to the zero for sine x over x will equals to the one. So we want to prove here. Okay, so first you might ask, so uh, why we need to prove it? Okay, so when we solve the limit, normally we will just sub the zero into both internet. But you realize if you sub sine zero over zero, you, you will get undefined or math error here. So this is the reason why uh, we will need to use other method to prove this one is equals to one. Of course, if you just so lady to prove you and you want to know this value is uh, is correct one, what you can do is you can just imagine, just sub the x equals to 0 0.0000001 and then for both, you should be able to get very close to one or the calculator might just tell you the one. Or you can just sub the negative 0 0.0000001 for both, you will still get a one here. Okay, but over here we need to find some methods to prove and that matter is we will need to use this uh, unit circle just in case you have no idea what is unit circle unit circle is the circle with the radius with one so since the radius is one then i should know this radius here will be one and this is radius this is one also so over here i have three different area one is the right angle triangle the small one and the big one right angle triangle and then we have an area of sector here all right so and then here we have some in the, the relationship uh, between these three different area. So let me just sketch out the smaller one, right angle triangle. And then we have a sector and the middle. Okay, so yeah, this is the sec this is the art length of the sector. Okay, this is the art length of the sector. Okay. Then we have a big triangle. Okay, so here, at least you should know um, this right, okay, right angle triangle are both of these. And then the, the angle between them will be x. So it'll be x. So this one, that we have an angle x here, angle x here, angle x here. Okay, why I need to use this unit circle? Because right now, I'm trying to get so something like sine x over, over x, and then from there, I'm trying to prove it's actually equals to 1. Alright, so... Okay, now, at least I know my hypotenuse is 1. Alright, if I want to find my opposite, I can just use the Sokatoa. So, so you just imagine this is A and B. So, how to find A? You just use sine x equals to A over 1. Then what is A? A actually equals to the sine x, isn't it? Then I know A equals to sine x. So, same idea, if I want to get the, what is B here, I can just say, okay, cos x equals to b over 1. Then b actually equals to the cos x. Do you see that? Alright, so then I know this is sine x, this is cos x. Alright, and then this one, the angle is x and the radius is 1 and 1 because this radius is 1 and 1, isn't it? Very simple. And for this one, um, let's say I do the a and b, but I know about the b, right? Because the b is basically is the radius. So b is 1. So how to find an A? I will use tangent because Sokato, right? Tangent is opposite over adjacent, which is A will equals to tangent X. Then my A is actually equals to tangent X. All right, why I want to do like this is I need to find all of their area, sort of something like area one, area two, area three. But here, at least I convince myself the area two is bigger or equals to the area one because the right angle triangle here is definitely inside the area of sector, isn't it? It's inside the sector. So definitely this area will be less or equal. And then the right, the big, the bigger one, this right angle triangle, you can see the area of sector is definitely inside the big right angle triangle, isn't it? So it's definitely, I know area three must be bigger or equal to the area one, uh, the area two here. So I have this sign for every single one. Then I can find the area just doing half time base time height. Area of sector is half r square theta, r square theta. And then area of right angle triangle, half time base time height. Okay, first thing is I want to solve this inequality and I want to get sine x over x, this is my objective. So the first thing is maybe, uh, maybe I will multiply two for every single one, then I have no more half here. And then the next thing I will do, maybe I will just um, divide sine x for every single one. I divide sine x here divide sine x here, and divide sine x here. All right, then this one sine and sine, I cancel out, I left a cos x. 
And then here I have a, I have a x over sine x. It's quite close, but I want sine x over x, so later I need to do something for it. And this one, tangent x over sine x, you should know tangent is sine over cos. It's sine x over cos x. Then sine x and sine x I cut, I left one over cos x here. Okay, then the next thing I want to do is I, I want to flip over this number. So in the inequality, if all the value is positive, right, we can do the flip over. I just give you some idea. Let's say we have two, uh, which is less than three, and this is less than five. So if I want to flip over, become 1 over 2, 1 over 3, and 1 over 5, what I need to do is I need to change the sign of the inequality. So from less than, change to bigger. You just do like this, and then you see this inequality makes sense as well. You can see this 1 over 2 is bigger than 1 over 3, and 1 over 3 is bigger than 1 over 5. So both inequality also correct. So by understanding this theory, so what I want to do here is I will flip over all of them. So the first one is become 1 over cos x. Then this one will become sine x over x. And then this one will become cos x over 1, which is cos x. And then I need to change the sign. All right. Then the next thing is I need to add the limit for every single one. So right now, I add the limit for the first one when x is closer to 0. So you should know cos 0 will give you 1. 1 divided by 1, you will get 1. All right. Then for the middle one, I just add the limit for it because this is the question right so this is what i want to prove here so i will just write down i will not do anything all right then this one you just imagine if i limit x is close to zero for cos x like i say cos zero will give you very close to one or we just say it's one all right now you have a little bit problem uh, which is we know this value is between one and one all right so over here in order to say um, this, uh, this sine x over x is equals to 1 when x is, close to, is closer to the 0, uh, we will use a theorem called squeeze theorem. Okay, so what squeeze theorem do is they're trying to find the minimum difference between uh, 1 and 1. So definitely, I cannot say, oh, 0 0.5 because the question here, uh, this inequality also say it must be bigger than 1, so definitely cannot be 0 0.1. So because of the squeeze theorem, then I say the limit when x is closer to the 0 for sine x over x is equals to 1. Proven. Okay, let me just explain uh, a little bit for squeeze theorem. I guess some of you like so blur about this. Okay, let's say we have some x exit and y exit. All right, let's say we have some uh, random equations. So let's say I have a uh, something equation like this. This is uh, fx. And then we have uh, another equation like this. Okay, this is gx. And then we have one more in the middle. Let's, let's say hx. So over here, um, at least what we know is uh, hx is at the middle and then this one the largest one will be the fx and then the smaller one will be the gx okay what the squeeze theorem do is is actually trying to minimize the distance here okay so the the uh, the difference between them is like this big and then you're trying to squeeze until as small as possible so you're trying to squeeze until it actually get one value here. So therefore, we just take this value. So, so you get back to the this one. When size over x is between 1 and 1, if I'm using the squeeze theorem, the minimum one value here is definitely is 1, isn't it? So, yep, this is how we prove this kind of question. I'm not sure you can understand what I'm doing here or not, but I hope you find it helpful to you. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.